Cool. Well, welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio here at uh, Park City. Guys, Praz, Ben, firstly, congratulations on having Sweet Mickey for president up here at Slam Dance. And, Thank you. Thank you. Um, a journey that kind of came about through a back door almost, right? Because mm -hmm. you were filming some earthquake footage and the right. recovery. So at what point did that transition happen? When did you know this was a different story? When um, Praz... Um, offhandedly mentioned this candidate that he was going to convince run for president named Michelle Martelli. <clears throat> and so I was going to meet him. We didn't really think about doing a film about him until the first video that came up was this guy in diapers named Sweet Mickey. And I called Praz and I was like, yo, is this, the, is this Martelli? And he's like, yeah, just, you know, trust me. He had an instinct about it. And so in that, this unexpected guy running for the presidency of the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere after earthquake devastated it, after years of, of corruption. And, and I mean, I just, I mean, I thought in that was a crazy idea. And, and every piece of cinema, great stories are about crazy ideas. Praz, why was Michelle, sweet Mickey, why was he the guy to put your hat and kind of muscle and money behind? I don't know, I just thought that um, someone that could help to inspire and bring hope to the people. Um, was he the best candidate of choice? Probably not. But, um, you know, when you go through a devastation like that, sometimes you have to go to the extreme. I mean, I'm seeing that from the hindsight point of view. I mean, in my good consciousness today, if I was to do it over, I probably wouldn't have chose the diaper guy, you know? But, um, but at that moment, it was, it was what my heart spoke to. And I just went with my heart. And what about you? Could you have run or because you were born in the U.S.? Because you were born in, you were born in Brooklyn, right? Yeah, I was born in the U.S. I can't run. But even if I could, I wouldn't run. Yeah. Because um, I don't have any desire to want to be a leader of a country. And um, I look at myself. You know how in the early BC centuries, like the 900s, the 1300s. I look at myself like a philosopher. When I was one of those guys that would just roam the earth and just talk about philosophically how the world should be. But to actually be the leader, I would not be a good leader because I'm too progressive. Yeah. You know, and, and as a leader, you can't be as progressive way of thinking as I am. And so for you having those, you got like that unique kind of combination where you're coming at it from an artist perspective. You've also been this, you, you like to have a private equity fund, you know, right. manage that as well. It's like, like, I don't know where that sits, like both sides of your brain are firing equally because one of those is so creative. And is, do you find creativity on the other side as well? Well, everything I do is going to be creative. So, so if I was to be a leader, I would get creative. But as, but as a president of a country in this day and age, you can't really be creative because you have to, you know, because to me, you know, as an artist, and, and I could be totally wrong, but in my mind, issues that we have, the only reason we have issues in the world is because of politics. Politics get in the way, right? It's real simple. People need jobs. Well, okay, create jobs. People need education. Give them free education. Or, or find a way to get them because you want people to be able to sustain your society. Right? Yeah. And the only way to sustain it is through economics, to, through education, and through healthcare. Right? So, but when you start getting corporations involved, politicians got to get donations so they can run their campaigns, that's when it starts to get real murky. So do you think after the earthquake that that kind of literally the buildings coming down and having these rush of people coming in from externally, like all these people coming in from other countries, and offering aid and help and setting up in like some infrastructure and other things, could that have been, or is that now a good step for Haiti because it means that people are taking an interest and in trying to create that education level, or is it kind of super disruptive because it kind of sets up a system of aid? Well, it sets up you. You start to <clears throat> enable these people, and I think that's a bad system. You know, I think I mean think of it like this: if you got a group of population that are hungry, and you come down and you just give them bunch of fish and bread, right? But they don't know how to fish for themselves and they're right by the water, right? Yeah. What purpose does that do? 
Because once they finish done, once the fish is done, now what? They're looking at the water. They don't know how to go get the fish for themselves. Yeah. So I don't believe in enabling people. So I, so I never believe in aid. I think aid should only come for a temporary, okay, you know what? For, for about a week, the country stopped because, first of all, the infrastructure was so poorly done there. So it was hard to get trucks and everything in. So, yeah, you need international aid. Fine. But other than that, when you start putting NGOs, that gets political, right? Because the NGO got to justify why they're there, right? And it becomes a business. Whereas you tell these people, look, find a way to develop your society where it can sustain for itself. Yeah. I remember there was a couple of people that I met who had gone in and set up like a little 3D printing lab. And these guys had actually, the, the Haitians had actually... Um, recognized what they needed, that there was worries of like disease being spread by blood spraying when like babies were being born, so they created a 3D printable like umbilical cord clamp, mm -hmm. and that was something that Haiti did first, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so it was kind of like them coming in and giving those skills to some locals then showed that the innovation could then come from right, them. Right, exactly. Um, which seems to me like the perfect sort of scenario, um, kind of that teacher manifest right. thing, right? Um, for you, like, is with the government that's in there now, um, is there? A, do you feel like there's a lot of hope there? Well, there's hope in a sense, you know. Cause I'm one of those people. I'm always going to see the positive, no matter how negative the situation is, because I'm an optimistic, right? So that's by nature. Because if I wasn't that guy, I wouldn't have bet on the diaper man to run for president. So in regards to the government, there's some hope. I think the best thing that came out of that situation is moving forward, because there's an election coming up this year. I think you probably want to get your best and brightest to vie for the office, because now they're looking at it like, man, if this guy can do it, right? And he's not even part of the political world and really fully at that time understood, you know, policy making and bipartisanship. Let me jump in the fray. Let me come up with some great ideas. He has some good ideas, but I, maybe I can hone on that idea and make it even better. I think that's the positive thing that came out of it. So in the movie, Ben, having mm -hmm. Wyclef jump into the race, um, obviously a fellow Fuji's member, I remember there was that clip, and I think it's in the trailer, where it's like um, Wyclef just looking at the camera, and he's like, you know, you got Praz on one side supporting Sweet Mickey, and you got uh, Wyclef, and he just says, and I think there's going to be another Fuji's <laughs> album. Right. You know, was that, a, do you think Wyclef was a distraction or was he like a healthy addition to the, to bringing focus? <clears throat> well, I mean, I thought Praz was really smart strategically because, I mean, obviously, you know, post Fuji's, um, like a lot of people um, know who Wyclef is. So Praz um, was like, cool. Wyclef's running, awesome. I'm gonna use him so people know about us because I know there's gonna be controversy there. So we use that in the film, but, all, but you know, in, in, you know in, in the real situation, I mean, you know, I thought Praz made great use of that, that, that opportunity in, um, in Wyclef coming to, to run, you know? So I think, uh, you know, I, I think it was smart. I mean, I don't think it was, a, I, I mean, I don't think the, 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 the ruling government was so powerful and corrupt they would have never let Wyclef run, even if he was eligible. They would have found some way to get him out because he would have won the election. He would be in the president down there right now. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I thought that, you know, I mean, it was a great addition to the story, but in real life, I, I thought it actually gave Martelli a boost, you know, and it also showed the difference between who the Haitian people were really behind. Mm -hmm. And what about for you, Praz? Like, that relationship with Wyclef? A healthy one or like politically do you think like do you get together and <clears throat> do you talk at all about what's best for Haiti going forward um I mean we we we, we fine now yeah. obviously but you know how it is man I mean I, I have to believe when he goes to bed at night he has to think to himself man I could have had it if it wasn't for this dude you know he jokes about it but you know what they say right the truth is told through a joke so, um, yeah, I mean, look, he could have been president. I mean, that would have been a historical moment, right? Artist, poor guy, lives, leaves Haiti, 
go to America to pursue his dream. Flips burgers. Flips burgers, become a superstar worldwide, go back to his country and be president. You can't even write that, <laughs> right? That's his legacy. Oh, and unfortunately, ironically, his bandmate is who stopped him from that. Now, I didn't do that intentionally. I just didn't believe he'd be a good president. That's all that was. I would say more insane story would be the one that got captured in film. <laughs> right, right, right. But that'd be, that's, a, that's another good story, too. <laughs> that's tough. So, uh, so if, if the people of Haiti kind of need mentors and these sorts of figures to come through to the foreground to step up, for you, who's that been in your career, in your world? Who's that mentor for you? Who do you look up to? Uh, I mean, I don't, you mean a specific person or? Yeah. In, <clears throat> I don't know if I have a specific person that's like my mentor. My mentor is really um, my inner self. And, and, and I draw inspiration from a host of people, from Gandhi, to Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Napoleon, you know, like these great leaders, battle good or indifferent, you know. And and so their spirit come into my spirit and I draw from that. That's why I went with Michelle once again, because something told me go with him. As insane of an idea it was. You know, so that's I, I can't take credit as the flesh that I'm living in right now. It's it's it's, it's a governing spirit that's bestowed upon me that allow me to see certain things. Very cool. So that's where I get my inspiration from. And Ben is an artist and a filmmaker, and now having your first kind of feature under your belt, mm -hmm. like who's playing that role for you, either personally or <clears throat> kind of more of an inspiring figure. Um, man. I don't know if I can follow up Sweet the pro Mickey? I mean, I, I would say Sweet Mickey. I would just say, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, that's a good question. I don't know if I could say that there's a, there's a particular person, but, you know, in, in the thread of what Praz was saying, the experience of making this story, the sum total of that has been an incredible experience, you know, and, and one as a filmmaker and, and one as someone who was fortunate enough to be, you know, to, to see this all go down and to capture it. So I think that it's important that um, the ignorance of the past that I had is replaced by my experience with the wisdom of, of what it took to pull this off and get it to this point. Cool. Well, congratulations Thank on you. having the premiere a couple of <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah.